I've taken my measures for the next panel. I know the length of the panel from the offset cleat at the eave to the front of the chimney, which is 29 and 7 eighths. And using a square, I've measured over to the corner of the chimney, which I know is 11 and 5 eighths. And taking the measure from the chimney to the rake edge, I can see that we're square, and I can just take that 11 5 eighths and transfer it to the panel all the way up. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish the panel in the exact same way that we did this one, and then we're gonna come and install it. We've now installed the panel that goes on the far side of the chimney, which takes all of the panel up until the back side of the chimney has been done. Now we're gonna to move to the back of the chimney where we're gonna focus on flashing the saddle and bringing the upper panels down and overlapping with the saddle and the panels that are already in place. Then we'll come back to the front, we'll flash the front, the sides, and the rear. Now that we're at the back side of the chimney, I've switched to using white flat stock. Normally you would use the same color as your roof, but for the purpose of the instruction video, I wanted to use a different color so that you could really see the work that was taking place in the valley and around the saddle. What I've done here is I've taken two standard V valleys and I have cut them. I've cut each piece so that they walk up the wall of the chimney. They walk up and over the top of the saddle, come up the roof deck. I've put a hem right here. I've folded it around the corner. And because this is a standing seam snap lock panel, on this side, I've come up about three eighths of an inch so that the next panel can come down and lock over this. And we'll show you a close up view of this. Um, so the next panel will come over, it'll lock down and push this. We haven't used any sealant beneath the hem here because we don't wanna trap any water that potentially gets underneath the valley. We don't wanna trap that water here at the corner. We want it to flow out from underneath the valley pan and down the roof. So we haven't used any sealant here, but we have used sealant in between the various layers of steel, especially here at the corner of any of the joins. And so we've done this pan, we've made it for each side. It's the exact same, with the difference being that on the far side of the chimney where we have a male rib, we've cut it down to about an eighth of an inch as it walks up so that the next panel can actually clip in. So the next step is to install a cleat in the valley and start running panels across the top and to the other side, and that's what I'm gonna do now. As I said, the next step is to install a valley cleat, and what I've done is I've measured six inches from the center of the valley. That space is called my reveal in the valley, and because we're in the north, I'm looking for six inches here at least. So I've made a mark six inches from the center, and I'm going to line up the offset cleat with my marks so that we have exactly six inches reveal as we snap our panels in. I'm going to install this up and down the valley using butyl tape underneath, and I'll make sure that my fasteners thread that butyl tape as we've done everywhere else on the roof. I'm going to go ahead and install that now. Now we have all of the panels installed on the roof. Everything is overlapping in the way that it should overlap. Everything is locked in in the way that it should be locked in. And the next step is to install the final overflashing around the chimney. So we're gonna install the front and then the two sides and then the two back plates. We've cut a kerf or a reglet on all sides of the chimney. So we're gonna insert our flashings into that. On the front of the chimney, we're gonna use a Z-trim and an end wall flashing. On the sides and rear, we're gonna use flat plates. Thanks very much for watching, and if you have any questions, please reach out to your All-American Steel rep or shoot us a note through social media.